Welcome to another episode of the Spatial Edge AI show. And we're doing deep data discussions. And with me here today, I've got Tristan. Okay, so Tristan, uh, you're going to either strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. The statement that I'm going to put out there is data scientists are becoming redundant because of AutoML. Ooh, playing onto a personal fear here. <laughs> um, Do you agree or disagree? Pains me, pains me to say it, but... I wonder if I should frame this. Let me, let me frame it in two ways. Okay. So there's a, there's a, a, we can explore this. There's a future state and there's a current state. Yeah. My answer is based on the current state. Okay. I think your answer might be based on the future state. Yes, where it's going. Okay. Where it's Let's going. Go. But we can maybe just discuss that Let's as part of the, yeah. Cool. So it uh, pains me to say it, but I, I strongly agree. Um, and maybe we're not there at the moment, but every day, every month, every year, all the big tech companies, uh, Meta, Google, Amazon, you just see them, OpenAI, you just see them launching more and more either auto ML tools or uh, a tool or a platform that is used for sort of the entire machine learning lifecycle from raw data to deploying a model or uh, in the case of something like ChatGPT and um, uh, I forget what the other one's called, but tools that help you code and like push code out for you, you just describe what you want and boom, there it is. So I think we are moving to a point where the number of machine learning engineers, data scientists, data analysts, et cetera, will be reduced. I think we're maybe at a point where we'll, we'll see the most now, and then beyond here, the productivity of every individual data scientist, every individual MLE will be augmented, and they'll be able to do what today 10 people were required to do, and tomorrow it'll just be one person being super productive. So I'm going to go with the... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll latch onto that now, but I'm going to go with disagreeing with it because I think the current state of things are in such a way that an order ML system is nice because the classic, I don't know, the, the, this, the one I have in mind is the uh, Python library that you can download and you can just run yeah. a whole range of models, yeah. it ranks it for you, picks yeah. the best one, you can use that one. High parameter tuning, everything, Everything's cross validation, there. models, models Sorted, not overfitting 100%. or underfitting. So, so, for me, so for me, that's like almost just another tool in your tool set. It's a great step in terms of well, what am I going to do first when I get started with a project? I'm going to push the, I'm going to push yeah, all the, the, the whole table I have into an auto yeah. and see what I get from it. Yeah. That solves my problem. I can move on. So it's almost like just an ex, an expediting of the process in terms of getting to the solution faster. But what is missing in that space is you still need to kind of define the problem well. Yes. You still need to gather the data and then yes. put it together, and then you can you know, ship it off to the yes. tooling so the tooling can make use of it and make sense yes. of it. And then you still need to interpret what's coming back from that and start and present it and, and play it back. Now, the caveat is, will that always be the case? One doesn't know. Because like you said, things are developing at a rapid pace. ChatGPT yes. is a new thing that's just popped on the scene. Can an LLM an interpret your outputs for you? Yes. Can an LLM help you define your problem space? Yes. I think what you're saying, I agree with. What's difficult in data science, it's not the last mile of the problem, it's the first mile of the problem. Formulating the problem correctly to deliver value and actually solve whatever is in front of you. And if you do that incorrectly, it doesn't matter how great the tool you throw at it is, it's going to not deliver something satisfactory. So that is very much a human problem. But what we're seeing from these large language models is uh, very interesting. a lot of nuance, a lot of understanding. Uh, who knows where it will go? One thing, one thing I also want to, want to put out is, uh, now, I don't know how much experience you have or what, which tools you've used and not used in the past. I actually recently um, found that there's other open source tools now that are just random exploration that can automatically, for example, generate features. Yep. There's something called deep feature synthesis yes, or something yes. like that, which is when I looked at the actual algorithm, it looks like a very basic idea. It is, okay, well, I've got my basic features. I'm just going to do uh, the sum, the, the mean, you know, I'm just going to yes. apply a bunch of functions to this, all the, all the yeah. columns, and then I've got a range of columns. Then I'm going to link it to all the other tables that's available. And I'm going to I'm going to join them. I'm going to run group by queries and other aggregations, and I'll end up with from two or three tables, I end up with thousands of features. Yes. I just throw it into a machine learning model, 
when we're playing our model, yeah. I get their feedback, I get their results, and now and then I can start filtering it down to okay, well, these seems to be the most important features. Yeah. And that that process automated. I mean, you just have to do a little bit of setup, but then automated, you then get a, a fascinating insight, and yes. that is, well, okay, I didn't even have to think about yes. like the original one of, you know, I'm just going to take the what data set can I take? Let's take the iris iris yeah. data set. I didn't even have to think about like, okay, but what yes. potentially about these? No domain these, expertise needed. These, yeah, these flowers. What are the? I don't have to think about. Okay, I can't even come up with the questions now. Let's say that the taxi data set, the New York taxi data set, which is also a classic data set on, on on Google. It's like, what time of day are they most busy? You know, what when is when are the peak periods? Yes. What is the average travel time? What is the average fare? How yeah. does the fares change? You don't even have to think about all those questions. You just say, here's the data. Get back answers. Oh, it actually calculated the yeah. average time of day, and that is actually a good feature in terms of predicting the price. And you can you can Friday afternoon define that problem, click start, go home for the weekend, come back. It'll crunch through all of those opportunities, all those different results, explore all that space, and just give something to you while you are off having a pizza and a beer for the weekend. Which is amazing. But is amazing. then it brings me back to the other nuance, where which is. Um, there could be potential mistakes. If there could be yes. potential issues in the data, and there could be other weird factors. Now, if well, there's, somebody... an ex there's an explosion of dimensionality of the problem now, right? You said, let's say we started with 100 features. We threw this feature generator on top that exploded it to 10,000 features. Now, you can run 100 features on your laptop if you have a nice laptop, right? Can you run 100,000 features on that laptop? Probably not. Now you have to spin up a cluster. Who knows if those features are meaningful? You probably don't know beforehand. So I think. I think the one issue is um, there's this theorem, no free lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, it states that for a lot of these optimization or machine learning like problems where you apply this uh, iterative algorithm to solve it, you sort of never know a priori which is the best way to solve it. You always have to go and, and look at your problem. Maybe there's some specific characteristics you understand, and you can identify an appropriate algorithm or family of algorithms. Maybe you have no idea, and you just start iterating through them. Um, but I think that's going to that's gonna bite this, this line of development, is that I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all algorithm we can apply to anything. But I think that's not what it's going to achieve. I think the real achievement is the speed up in productivity. Even if a lot of this is wasted effort and it's not going to solve everything, it's going to it's going to crunch through so much that the data scientists or teams of data scientists would have had to do. So rather than Pierre focusing on feature generation and Tristan focusing on five different models we're going to try, and uh, Byron doing uh, the hyperparameter tuning for our models, and somebody else looking at how do we evaluate these models, now that one person can probably do all of those sub problems by themselves using these automated tools within a think, short span of time. In a short span of time, and I think that's where we'll see a requirement for fewer data scientists, but each one being highly productive. That makes so that makes sense to me. It takes so in other words, it's taking away a lot of busy work. Yes. But then, but then now the in, another interesting dynamic. And, and it, it allows them to focus on those real challenging parts of the data science problem life cycle, making sure that we formulate the problem correctly, making sure that the result is meaningful and it's not erroneous. They can spend the time on the actual challenging parts, not the not the very repeatable parts of it. And so now there's two there's an interesting dynamic here because if this is in quote unquote easier or so easy which means calling an API with a set of data, then well, anybody can start doing it. The problem with anybody starting to do it means that they don't necessarily know what they're getting themselves yes. into. They can't necessarily interpret or understand. It's a question of quality. Of. Yes, where there's somebody who's then got the experience, understanding the knowledge of what's happening behind the scenes and inside of the data, they can then actually yes. interpret and understand, okay, this is what happened. Yes. This is how I need to use this tool. Yes. But then it becomes a question of your competency and how you yes. apply that within the... That the applies to everything, business, right? Which, which yeah. actually doesn't... Okay, it's not specific to this yes. problem now. But, but, but maybe I'm even wrong, right? I, I'm saying that... Uh, these tools are going to make us so much more productive, we're going to need less of us, less data scientists mm -hmm. in the world, right? But maybe these tools allow data science to be so uh, so useful and the average data science project actually delivering value. Mm -hmm. I, I would guess the average data science project doesn't deliver value always. I think you need a highly skilled team a to of, deliver value. But now maybe these tools allow more a higher percentage of projects to to be successful and deliver value. And maybe that explodes the number of projects that are tackled with data science, and therefore the number of data scientists explodes with this, that. This feels to me like the classic thing of, well, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference another domain area. So uh, the cost of storage, classically, yes. has been very high yes. in history. And this has come down, come yes. down exponentially over yes. time to where we are today, where it's, it's, it's extremely cheap for yes. like a gigabyte. Like even yes. a terabyte is pretty The same pretty with cheap. compute, the cost of compute. And now with renewable energy, the same with uh, energy. And so all the factors that go into this computing world and AI world, they're all driving down to zero. Everything is coming down. So now, so now what, what, what does this mean? So I love your, your flip on perspective. The one perspective is almost like one of uh, scarceness, as in there's only a certain amount of yes. things can be solved. But that could be because of the limiting factor of, well, it's expensive exactly. for a team of data scientists yes. to spend 12 months trying to solve a problem. Yes. Now it's like, well, if it's as cheap as one data scientist solving the same problem within a weekend, yes. well, then that opens Explosion. up a whole new... The internet, new, right? Yes. A million websites pop up every two hours, yes. yes. A now, democracy of the technology and the tools and the techniques, and as a consequence, an explosion of their use. And so if, so if, if the, let's say, let's assume everything stays the same, let's say, I don't know, there's a lot of statistics out there around the success of, of data science or machine learning projects. Let's say that statistics stay the same, and I'm just going to quote one of them. I don't know if this is now exactly the same, if it's still correct, but let's say it's, let's just call it 20% um, succeed, 80% fail. Let's yeah. use the 80 20 principle. But now you've got, instead of 10 being done in a year, you've got 10,000 being done yes. in a year. Now I agree with you. Now you, instead of having two being successful, you've got, what did I say, 1,000 or 2,000? 2,000, I think. 2,000 yeah. being successful. Yes. That's a massive difference in, yes. in just absolute volume. Yes. Whereas everything else staying the same because yes. you've got more speed, because you've got exactly. lower cost, your your volume ends up being better, which means yes. you end up solving all these problems, which means you end up uh, having a lot more value that's being created. There's, yeah, there's more. The there's just more economic value being created in the economy. So, depends on your mindset. Depends on then, and then, and then obviously, but then for me as well, one thing I, I can't get away from. I don't know if this will ever... Okay, so maybe the, the, the way to frame this is as follows. A lot of technologies being developed and tools being built say something yes. on the tin. And then when you actually try and work with them, there's a lot of limitations that yes. don't really get a lot of mention yeah. or that needs to you know, get, go through active development to then solve those problems, yes. which you always have to deal with. But assuming you know how to use a tool, you know how to work within those limitations, and it still gives you the productivity that you need, yeah, I guess then at the end of the day, you're winning. Yes, I think it's it's very difficult to forecast anything into the future. Uh, probably nearly impossible, if not outright impossible. I think what makes me excited for the future of AI, data science, and all these tools and techniques that come with it, auto ML, these uh, large language models, etc., is that most technologies follow an S curve rate of development over its its lifespan. It starts slow. It takes a long time for fundamental. Um, building blocks of the technology to come out, and then it increases and increases and increases and goes through exponential growth, and then eventually it matures and the the rate of of improvement slows right down until it pretty much doesn't slow down. Think about the first iPhone that came out in, in 2007, and the, the next iPhone after that, and the next one after that, huge leaps. And uh, how, how long ago did a change happen to the iPhone where there was anything noticeably different? Very, very long ago. It, it's, it's now matured. And... Uh, what excites me about AI and data science and all these tools around it is rapidly they're still changing. It's now it's now in one of those a year ago, exponential curve. A year phases. ago, you had to be a data nerd to know what a large language model was. Now every single person in the world knows what a large language model is. It's the most downloaded and used product ever. It's uh, and that's still increasing. And I think that's where, why. Who knows where the future will go? Yeah. But the rate of innovation at the moment still uh, just seems like it's gonna gonna increase. Cool. I think I think that that's it. I don't think I've got anything Boom. else. Cool. Thank you so much. No problem. That was fun.